Chairman, Excellencies, Deputies, Kvod Rabbanim Chavrei HaKneset, Members of the clergy, dear assembly, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to express my warmest thanks and appreciation to ICD, to the Interparliamentary Coalition for Global Ethics, and to the Foundation for the Preservation of National Values for inviting me to express the point of view of Judaism on the topic contemporary challenges, the role of religion and religious leaders in the current national religion regional and global agendas. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلط, passed away, his spokesman made the following declaration. <coughs> those who believe in the Prophet, he just died. But those who believe in God, the Prophet is still alive. What the, what the meaning of the spokesman <coughs> statement? At my best understanding, the spokesman wanted, through his declaration, to deliver the following message. Prophets' teachings are divine teachings. The similarity between Judaism and Islam are very surprising. It's written in the Quran, those who believe in the Quran and those who follow the Jewish scriptures and the Christians and the Sabians, any who believe in God and the last day and, or, and work, while truthness shall have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. One of our greatest scholars, Harambam, Maimonides stated, Islam and Christianity are part of God's plan to spread the same ideals of Torah, the same ideals of Judaism throughout the world. We are thankful to them because owing to them, this moves society closer to a perfected state of morality and toward a greater understanding of God. If we dig a little bit more, we will discover that things which unit us are more important than the things which divide us. According to, to, to the two holy books, Bible and Quran, God created man at his image and likeness. Why did God not start by creating two or three men? Did we ever stop to think about this question even once? What's the meaning of creating just one single man? Every man is a descendant from the same father. In spite of their physical and moral differences, whatever the color of their skin, the shape of their skull, the language they speak, the culture in which they are immersed, the religion they practice, or even the country where they live. This primordial connection links us all, which should bring us to universal brotherhood. The whole humanity was generated by one single man in order that nobody will be able to say, my father <coughs> is noble than yours and my blood is redder, redder than yours. Universal fraternity and equality are the first ideas which appear from the table, from the tale of the creation of the world. To impose the superiority of one group of people over another, to establish a hierarchy amongst human beings, to create a discrimination based on ethnicity and origin is in contradiction to the Bible and to the Quran that give humanity a common father. And if we dig more, we will find that we share a belief that love, compassion, mercy, altruism, and the force of inner truthfulness and the spirit have greater power than hate, enmity, and self-interest. We share also a sense of obligation to stand on the side of the poor and the oppressed as against the oppressors. We have also a profound hope that good will finally prevail. Whatever may be the differences and, the, and interpretations, all religions would agree 
that peace is an absolute necessity and the religion plays a vital role in the peaceful development of the, of the individual, the family, the society, the nation, and the world. Religion has always been the key to maintain peace of mind yeah. and to provide spiritual solace in time of emergencies such as during various calamities or in time in invasion by aggressors or other disturbances. <coughs> With a such common platform, the men of religion have to be convinced and to convince others that the world is our country, the mankind are our brethren, and to do good is our religion. It's the task of men of faith to convince that God loves peace and hates wars. Yes, peace, shalom, salam is the real name of God. His name can never be a synonymous of war and hatred. War is always a defeat for humanity and an offense against God. No conflict, no hatred can't resist prayers, forgiveness, and love. The dialogue reveals us that war and misunderstandings are not invisible. Nothing is lost with dialogue. Everything is possible with peace. In the Western world, religion is a kind of submission to, to, to totalitarianism. We can agree with this statement. And then to come back home in order to lead a battle of existence, a conflict of civilization. <clears throat> but we come to bring another message. We came to say, if such a battle exists, there will be no winners. The most urgent thing to do is not to misuse religion as in the past, to not use religion as justification of pain and suffering, to kill or to cause suffering on behalf of God constitutes, constitutes a desecration of the name of God. This message has to be taught in our synagogues, in our mosques, in our churches, and in our schools. We have to work with our children, with our communities, on the basis of this text. This message has to be introduced everywhere. Today, this message becomes the real challenge of religion is the challenge of humanity. Can I accept someone else's image of God? If I can't, then I am creating God in my own image. To make peace or to sign a peace agreement means that I recognize that my opponent is created in God's image. I recognize his humanity. Religion it at the heart of human identity and its voice has to be heard everywhere. We have to give the whole power to those who are fighting against the totalitarian forces and to those who are giving hope to the future of humanity. We need to be active to put an end to the manipulation of holiness which wants to create massacres and bloodshed. The political forces need spiritual support to preserve the holiness of life. They have to accomplish their own task and we as men of faith, our task. We have to work within the framework of the educational system to spread the good words to our future political leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a member of the executive committee of ECRL the European Council of Religious Leaders. On Tuesday and Wednesday, we had our annual meeting in Vienna, Austria. Jews and Muslims agree that today in Europe, we are facing the same problems. Jews are suffering from anti-Semitism and, Muslim, and Muslims from Islamophobia. Laws are voted or can be voted which will prevent us to respect our respective dietary laws, kosher for Jews and halal for Muslims. Some political parties are trying to, to prohibit the ritual slaughtering. Other political parties would like to prohibit circumcision, brit milah for Jews, and tara 
for Muslims, or they want to prevent and to prohibit the, the construction of minarets. <laughs> the principle of freedom of religion is at stake. And we believe that freedom of religion practice is a fundamental element in human freedom generally. To stop these attempts, cooperation between Jews and Muslims is needed and quite urgent in order that everybody will worship his God in the best manner. Amen. I would like to conclude by one of the most famous Jewish prayers, Osei Shalom Bim God who makes peace in the heaven, who ya say shalom alenu, he will make peace upon all of us. Amen. Amen.